Hi, welcome to Meeples and Meeples episode 50. I'm Brian. I'm Ian. I'm Patrick. Andrew. Uh, before we get started, please subscribe to us on YouTube so you can be the first to see our videos. Also, follow us on Facebook. And, of course, visit our website, meeplesonmeeples.com. The game of the week this week is Seasons. Now, Seasons is called that because it's a game based upon the changing of seasons and the changing through different years. Now, the idea of Seasons is to be the one who gains the most crystals. The, this is the score tracker, and as you score crystals, you go up on the score tracker. The one who has the most crystals at the end of the game wins. How you gain crystals? Well, that's fairly easy. The game is focused on each player having a player card. The player card has all the information that you need. The number section right here tells you how many cards that you can play or have played in front of you at any given time. The little notches at the top of the card are where you'll be placing your energy tokens and you use your energy tokens to cast spells. The spells are the cards in the game. Now at the beginning of the game everybody is dealt with nine cards and you're supposed to play it as in a draft. You go through your nine cards, you find one card that you like, you pick it, you pass on your cards to the person around you, and you keep doing that when you get the deck of the series of cards, pick one, pass it on, until you have a total of nine cards. That will create your starting spell book. But you don't have all cards right away. The game season is broken up into three years. You have to choose three cards for each year. The first year you'll choose three cards that you can play immediately. You'll choose three cards to play during that you'll get into your hand during second year, and you'll choose three cards that you won't get into your hand th for a third year. So you have to choose your cards very, very quickly to figure out how you're going to play throughout the seasons. Once everyone has picked their card and picked their spell books, it starts off by rolling the dice that is matching the season that you're in. You start in winter, you'll transition through spring, summer, and fall. And when you transition to a new season, you'll pick up the die and roll those dice. The number of die that you use, dice that you use is equal to the number of players plus one. So this is a four-player game. It comes with five dice for each season. If we're playing a two-player game, you'd have three dice, etc. So at the beginning, the first player will roll the dice. And the dice are going to actually tell you what you can accomplish during that round. Each person will, one at a time, choose one of the dice. Each of the die has symbols on them. Some symbols represent energy tokens that you will collect for choosing that die. Some symbols have a round circle around it that allow you to change energy tokens into crystals. Other, the other sides of the dice have stars that allows you to go up into higher uh, numbers to be able to play more cards. And some of them have a number at the top, it just means that you gain that many crystals. When you gain energy tokens from the dice, you can use those energy tokens to cast cards. Each card has a little bit of a requirement on them that tells you what you need to have in order to cast them. Some of them have crystals that you'll, you, to cast them, you actually have to go down on crystals and lose score points. Other of them, ha other of them have energy tokens. When you play, pay the energy tokens, you'll play the card in front of you and it has an effect immediately or later on in the game or a continuous effect depending on what type of card it is. If you pay with energy tokens, obviously you discard the energy tokens, um, and that's how you go through it. At the end of the game, each card that you have out in front of you is often worth a certain amount of crystals that at the end of the game will add up to an even higher score on the score tracker. There's a limit to how many cards you can have in front of you, and that is how many numbers you have on, that are covered on your score tracker. There's a way to play cheats. They're built into the game that you will lose crystals in order to have a, bo a bonus or a benefit, but you only can use three of those in a game, so there's a limit to how many times you can pull a special move that will give you a benefit in case the dice aren't doing anything for you. This, as I said, you'll go around. The one dice that you do not pick, because there's only going to be one die that is left over after the roll and everyone's picked, has a number of circles at the bottom of it. And the number of dots tells you how many months or how many numbers you're going to skip forward. For example, this has three dots. If I was on one, I'd move three dots forward. That would change seasons. Once you go past season 12, you go forward a new year. Once you go around the circle three times at the end of three year, you tally up your points, and whoever has it is the winner of the game. Uh, sounds very complicated. It's not. It's not. That was a long rules explanation, but it's really... There are a lot of rules, but it, you learn it pretty quick. You pick yeah. it up pretty fast. It's, it's actually it's more about just looking at the dice and doing what the dice allows you to do. Um, should we start with components like we usually do? Yeah, that's okay. Fine. Ian, you want to jump in there? Or? Uh, player mats, bonus. Um, the big dice, love them. Uh, the, I like the uh, fact that the player mats have a really? spot for everything. No, you don't I don't like, like the big dice. Really? 
Oh, you're you're a horrible. I person. have big hands, and it's hard to hold on to five of these. Really, I didn't have a problem. It's all about at all. The, it's all about the monster roll. You get to. I, I like I dig it. it. I dig it. And they're high quality. They're they're, they're etched very, in. They're gonna hold they're up well over time. They're super nice. They're. I mean, everything about them is awesome. I just don't like holding big dice. The uh, um, the energy tokens, good cardboard. Everything yeah, really is a pretty decent, decent cardboard. Board. But going back to what I was going to say about the player boards, is there's a place for everything on the player boards. You place to put up your little board? little mana things. Uh, easy to keep track of how many cards you can play. I mean, it pretty much explains everything on there. There's even a spot. This little hole is where you can actually place the die that you chose. Actually, in the expansion, they actually put something special on there. There's yeah, but originally the before the expansion, there. everybody's like, "Oh, it's to hold my die there." Um, so it's pretty slick that. Uh, you know, nothing really gets lost or bumped too much. All the player little dudes, they're individual, I guess. That's true. Your character. Your, your yeah. cards. And yeah. they, there's a good color cube that, to mark your point or your position on the, on the game. I also like the cards. Each card has pretty decent uh, imaging on it. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the artistry on the cards is they didn't have to. I mean, they could easily have just put information on the card. And each card has a different artistry on it. And I think that's a really... Nice use you okay. build your cards though. Yeah. Is there they're okay quality, but it's just it's a card game where you're constantly holding them. So and so I know some people aren't always care of it's just a precaution because the if the cards start going the game's useless after that. So I, I just leave them out of you know, take care of it. Thinking future wise it's gonna be they'll hold up better. Um I don't I I have no complaints about the the components at all. For a game that's mostly cards I think the theme actually kind of comes through well. I like the idea of how you're able to cast different spells. And you're more likely to get certain types of magic depending on the season. So they're kind of playing off of that. Um, which is cool. Well, no, I, I, before we go on, the, the one thing that I, I do like about the components is the fact that it is not just a deck builder. It's a unique uh, deck building type of, of component in which you're trying to create a deck to, to play cards from. But it also, that is limited by dice roll. There's, there's a lot of... Um, multiple types of games here. I mean, there's there's chance, there's a kind of a deck building or, or card playing game. I mean, there, it, it crosses many different uh, genres. I think we've covered components pretty well. <laughs> that little moment of silence there. Um, should we move on to strategies then? Um, the strategy starts like right away when you first pick up the deck and you deal out those cards and you're automatically in it. And that's kind of, you're into the game, you've got kind of an idea of what you're seeing passed around. And then um, you're trying to play against, you're trying to play with what's in your hand, and you're also trying to figure out what the other people are going to try to get if you're letting that go in the rounds and as they're coming around, so you can kind of get a feel of what they're going to try to do That's too. That's true. The drafting lets you, you know your hand, and you have a general idea of what else is out there. You don't know who has what, but you know, you've seen pretty much every card mm -hmm. pass by you at some point, which is kind of cool. Um, and then, like you said, the strategies. It's picking the right cards and not letting people get too many of a certain type of card that because they can play off and they stack the power. So if you let somebody get the right cards, you could just be giving them the win early on. Yeah. But then you have to look at your nine cards and choose carefully. Okay, I can only use three year one, mm -hmm. and I have to put three for year two, so they'll get unlocked about a third of the way through the game. And then those last three, so you want to make sure you choose your cards in the correct order too. So it's so what yeah, plays that's what, definitely... what plays better in the beginning section versus what can play good in the end. There's there's strategy versus and versus how ahead. much you have on your because you can only hold what seven is that what it is yes. seven and there is actually a card in here that lets you hold up to More ten I believe. Yep. Yep. but you're not you're not one hundred percent stuck on those cards either because there are cards that allow you to pick cards during the middle of the game too so you can get more to your hand and then play more out on the board the, the other part of strategy is also what die are you going to pick because when you see the, when the dice are rolled you have to look out there and you say what is my plan right now and sometimes you don't you can't do anything year round because you don't have enough energy tokens but you see the dice that are out there and you have to plan i have this card i won't be able to play it this round but if i choose that dice right now or that die right now we can i can make a plan for the next move so you actually mm -hmm. have to move, think about two moves ahead when you're even choosing your die also, what die do you want to leave in the center? I mean, if I get a bonus for changing seasons, some cards give you bonuses when seasons change. I'm going to try to finagle it so that there's a three a dice with th or a die with three pips at the end of it that no one picks, so that it jumps to the next season, thereby giving me a bonus. But that um, also leads to tough choices, and I really need those two types of, of exactly. energy tokens are magic. Which but I, I might not want it to go too far ahead because the game will be over soon. You know, the faster it's going on the track. It's your so. probability, too. Yeah. I mean, you have, in, the, in each season, you have a higher probability of getting certain items. So if you wanted to jump to the next one to get more fire versus more water in this one, 
but that means something that you have to let slip. Yeah. What well, would have given you better energy tokens now? So yeah. there's really some right. give or take. Like, uh, I'm going to let that die stay out there. Even though I can maybe use it now, in the long run, it's a better choice. Yeah. But yeah. that comes into play with your three cards that you get in the first season, second season, is which season is it really going to benefit you? Is it going to benefit you at the end of the four seasons, or is it going to... I mean, you have you have the idea of whether or not how much you can hold in your bank. You have um, how many player cards can you have out on the on the front. Are you going to take negatives in order to gain ahead now versus later? You have the what everybody else has out on the board or out you know laid out in front of them. Are you going to play against that or for it? You know, giving people extra cards versus taking them away. They have to take it back in their hand versus dump it off. I mean, plenty of things that try to screw with the game as you're playing it, and so. Your initial strategy could just be out the window within the first second round. You do have to adapt. I yeah. Agree. So I mean, you're on the fly. You're constantly changing. You could be like I think I started in zero and I came in second, and I just I literally had no points the entire game, and then came uh, I beat everybody out until second. But you were like so far ahead, it wouldn't even matter. So I mean, it's just it's it's an interesting game all the way through, and you're constantly in your toes and constantly battling for position. Um, should we move into likes and dislikes then? Sure. Strategy. Uh, I think I like the components. I love the dice. I know if we've heard Andrew's feel on that, but um, besides components, though, I I kind of uh, like the fact that it could kind of be considered Magic the Gathering light. Like if you're not, a, you know, people who are into Magic are hardcore Magic players, but because you're, I'm sorry, but you're getting mana. That's what you're getting with the dice, and then it lets you cast certain spells, but you have to have the correct amount of energy or type of energy to cast certain spells, and it's. It's a lighter version of that with more randomness because of the dice and, of course, the board had thrown in and the, the victory points. Um, so it's, it's like Metro, but absolutely not. It's no, it's right. absolutely a lot like that. It's all cards, and you use mana to cast cards. I think we're going to get... You're going to have a lot of people say, oh, it's nothing like Magic. Um, I, disagree th I disagree with that there, but that's a minor point. Um, from a hardcore Magic player, I agree with Brian. Really? <laughs> magic for he dresses up to play. Uh -huh. um, what, yeah, he larps. What I want to, what I want to say, I don't like the player mats. I don't like them. I don't really. Well, they're all individual characters. Why can't you get like a, a different character set of you know like different skill sets for each character? I mean, get get yourself into that the, character. The, the, the expansion, the expansion does have special abilities that your character. Well, that and it's it's hard to keep track of your stuff. You bump it once, you're yeah. off. I mean, and. Trying to keep track of where you're at. I mean, give yourself some dials. Get you some sliders. Get something in oh, there. See, I actually... never really had a problem with that. That's well, kind of a know. nice little. I mean, it doesn't take up too much space. You know, sometimes those player mats games just get huge. Well, I'm, I agree with space issues. I mean, I think it's compact enough. I just don't agree with uh, the fact that you're putting like a little wooden piece on there that you're trying to keep on one piece, and you're really you're kind of somebody could bump it one forward or back or something happened. And, and it's very easily to. lost, and you, and really you're not paying attention to it enough to be like. Wait, that's how much I had. So I, I, that's I think true. the the cube part, I guess, is a little iffy. It's a pain. I, in the I like how everything's so simple, though. It's not overly complicated with the pieces. Not a huge board. Yeah, um, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, your player mat isn't huge. It doesn't have nine sliders and two knobs, and you know, to keep track of your score. It's very simple, basic. It is a com point. It is a complex game because they broke it into phases and what you can do each. I mean, individual phases, it makes it play very, very simple and actually very easy to flow through and run through a game. The, the things I like, the dice I think are, I know you don't feel that you're, you feel that they're over large. I like the fact that they're die cut. I mean, you, oh, this, oh, is gonna last, this is going to be last for a very long period of time. Another thing I like about this is my children like to play this game. It says for 14 up, and there are some rules that are, are a little bit more complicated. Of course, they really like it. They like magic, but you have to no. They do not like magic, but you have <laughs> to really like pay, you have to really you really have to yeah. pay attention to how the game plays. Um, so for for younger kids, it is difficult, but for my preteens and teens, they love this game, and, and we've played this quite a bit. Um, it's it's not that hard of a game to grasp and, and for them to learn. One thing that I, I have heard a lot of detractions about. And, and I can kind of see where where certain players are going with their, their discussion on this. There's a lot of interaction with cards. And sometimes when you have, you know, seven or, you know, 15 cards in front of a one player, each card's can interact with what other people are doing. And when you change a season, all of a sudden you can have like nine people activating cards at the exact same time. And if you activate a card, that can change how my card activates. And when you have 15 cards per person, there are several players out there that just say it is just too much randomness at once and too much interaction between all the cards and there have been times when i played it where we've had all four players 
but maps out on cards in front of you, it, it does get. But that's a little part of the strategy in that you want your cards to play, and the bonuses start but, stacking up. But, but does the, it get to be a bit much yeah. math wise, perhaps? No, it's not so much math wise. It's just but, like some people just get lost. Well, this activates if that happens, but if that card activates, then this card doesn't get that, which means my card doesn't get its bonus. And so people say there's just way too interaction interaction with cards. Well, I don't feel that way, but. I do see where they're going with it. I have come into games where it has been overwhelming. You have to take time and go through everybody's uh, card on their table, and then it just starts to drag down. Well, the to go to that point though, it's kind of fun to because you're um, you're building this strength. So it's not that you had it at the end. You have 15 cards. You've actually been building with these five, and then this six, seven, eight. So you have been doing that move over a couple different rounds, and then you kind of get used to that one. You move it on the next. So it's not so over cumbersome, I guess. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, coming in at 15 cards, yeah, it's, you're going to be like, that's a lot, but you've been doing this over the past several rounds. Yeah, you're only adding a that card th occasionally. Yeah, so, I mean, you can kind of play well, to that point. But He's you know, into it. But even when we play with four players, there's that one card that said, when somebody does this, you lose this many points as long as you have this many mana in there. And maybe this it, game it does it for you. I think it works really well if you can trust the people you're playing with on an honor system and saying... Move me up too. Yeah, because because if you know that you're going to lose three, and you know yeah. that, I mean, it's true. pretty simple as long as you can. I don't do that. trust that's you. True. Yeah, yeah. That's well, true. Yeah, you being a magic We player. always try to screw each other over, and we don't trust each other at all. I, there is other one other minor complaint. For the most part, there's not a lot of player interaction. Most of your cards benefit yourself. Occasionally, it'll have an effect on another player, but for the most part, you're really keeping track of your hand. And once you've chosen your, you know, you you kind of watch what die everyone's choosing because you want to make sure you get the you know the die you want once you have that for that particular hand now it's just i'm staring at my player board and my cards and everything i play pretty much just adds to my score and occasionally you mess with each other but not as much as you would expect i do like well with the player tracker points though i believe i, I feel like i'm actually battling you for points the whole way through at least I mean, the, to, to, to integrate that piece. That's yeah, true. So it's competitive. There's a, goal, there's a goal to the game, yes. but not so much interaction. But it's, always, it's, it's constant, though. It's constantly coming up like, oh, I'm at 15 points, but you're at 16. I can, I got to get ahead of you somehow. It's a competitive thing, yeah, but as far as like actual being, direct, like yeah. attacking each other with magic spells you doesn't don't. happen as much as you think, no. Yeah, it's more playing off the cards you have in front of you. Very few that are actually set to, to attack. True. But the game is not based to attack. It's more... Playing the seasons, playing Mother Nature, playing. Well, but you are becoming a sword. You are competing sorcerer. mages to become like the grand mage of the kingdom or whatever. That's the plot. Oh well, that was not portrayed. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> well, the other theme honestly doesn't come through super strong that way. Does the, the story? I think somebody didn't tell us that. You can throw the story out to be honest. Yeah, and, and that's been another complaint is that it's a story applied to mechanics. The, the story isn't necessary. It's it's a it's a card playing dice rolling game that has a story that's kind of there. It's mechanically why? sound, thematically yeah. weak. Yes. and that's why Brian gave it a two. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. We, Should we get to our reviews then? Sure. One is terrible. Ten is awesome. Go. I give it a nine. It's up there. It's good. It's fun. It's quick. It's easy to play. And I mean, with the phase breakdown and as complicated as Pat makes the rules seem, they're actually not that bad. No, they're not that complicated. Yeah, there's just lots of there's just a there's lot, a lot of rules. Lots but of possibilities. They click yeah, they do. It's, it's, it kind of felt like you know, it's coming into it like I did X Wing, where you feel like there's going to be a lot to it. But since they break it down, it it actually flows very, it's very well. The Darth Vader, they just kept yeah. circling yeah. off the side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you can't do that in this game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, that, uh, is that it? Yeah, that's wow, it. Wow, that was short and to the point. Um, I'm probably that's about it. A, I'm not quite to a nine. I'm at about eight point five. Because the theme is a little weak, and I, I'm i definitely one about, I love like a good solid theme and it to really pull me into the game, and this doesn't do that so much. But every, I love dice, I like a little bit of randomness, I don't, I like playing cards and when, when chain reactions start to happen, it has a lot of cool me mechanisms in the game that, that, that are right up my alley, the types of things I enjoy in a game. Um, I would like a little more player interaction. Uh, I do think this would be a good game, don't listen to this guy, to bring in people who are hardcore Magic players and Yu-Gi-Oh, and they only play card games. This might be a way to bring them into your board game group and say, "No, it, it's similar to that. Just you're adding a board, a score tracker, and a few other things, but you are casting magic based on what you have to spend. So you could possibly get some of your friends away from their card games and join them into your board game group with this game. Um, really fun, solid 
Uh, boy, I'm gonna be the low one on this. I hate. I hate that. Oh, I like this game. Two. I just two. can't score. I, you gave it a what? An eight. He's a nine, eight point five. You give him an eight point five. You have to give it exactly the same score that your your review your rules were long. Yeah, I would say seven point five. So that was that's not a bad that's review. Like it's, 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 it's good. Um, I disagree with you on the magic. There's not a, when you're playing Magic the Gathering. There's a lot of interaction. It's constant attack. A magic player would say this is mechanically like, oh, speaking. They would this say cute. A they, light would say, they would say this is cute, but this is no magic. There's there's no interaction. There's no attacking because that's the whole idea of Magic the Gathering is you're to decimate your opponent. I know, and but the, is, mech, the mechanisms no. in the this game are very be, this, I would disagree. I don't think this would be the one to pull in. I think there's other games like that, but that's not about this game. Um, My thing I don't pony like, might pull them in. <laughs> Pretty pretty princesses. <laughs> Anyways, solid nine game. The uh, seven and a half. I like the game. My kids like. It. It's not one of our favorites. It's it's a simple game. I I don't feel the theme on it, and that's kind of what's missing to me. It's a uh, each individual item is solid. Putting them together is solid, but it still feels like a game that's trying to be different genres all at once to different people. We have dice and cards and chits and the dice allow you to use the chits to to make cards it's throwing different uh, different genres together it works it's smooth but the theme isn't there and i think the it's just kind of thrown together to to get these different pieces to try to play with each other to try to, to do something to, new. to get your board gamers and your magic players no, playing this together this will not bring <laughs> That's magic exactly what it's this doing. is not going to get magic players in it'll get people who like to play deck builders which is not magic a, a deck building game uh, but people this is, who like dice. The deck building doesn't come because you you get cards randomly. Yeah. You don't know what you're getting. You flip up. It's well, that's deck what I'm saying. You are buying that's specific what I'm cards. It's, it's it's a way to try to get those type of people in. This is um, with with magic. You have your deck built already. You come with it. So this is this is a way to try to get deck builders in. And people who like dice. Uh, people who like games. They put all these components people together. Like games. I mean, <laughs> like uh, people, people who like score games. It's to try to put all these together and tack the theme onto it. It works well. It's smooth. I just didn't feel it. Seven and a half. <laughs> Go eight and a half. Nine. Go eight and a half. I, I, I don't know what to say after that. Um, <laughs> player interaction, yeah, I wish there was more. The cards are nice. It's very colorful. I like colorful things. Dice too big for me. Seven. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm mad if you were that. I appreciate that. I, <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> Well, there it is. Um, that's seasons for this week. Tune in next week, and we'll have a new game for you.